So how much fun was that? What, what great artists. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Discover. I want to start by thanking you for your business and, thank, and taking the time here to join us in Las Vegas. You know, technologies may change, business models may shift, but one thing never changes for us, and that's the importance of the relationships that we build with you, our customers, and our partners. You know, that has been the foundation of HP for the past 75 years, and it will remain the foundation in the years to come. We all recognize how busy you are and how invaluable your time is, so we appreciate your willingness to invest some of that time with us this afternoon and over the next day or so here in Las Vegas. Our team has worked very hard to make sure you get the greatest value out of your time here this week. So we want to do a few things during the next few days. First, I want to provide an update about what's been going on at HP, including our decision to separate HP into two new companies. I want to introduce you to the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise and explain what it means for you. I'd also like to share our perspective on the evolution of IT and how HP is providing innovative solutions for the new style of business. And we want to launch four new ways to help you transform your business. And then finally, we want to hear from you on how we can do even better of a job, an even better job of helping you achieve your goals for your organization. So let's get started. I think everyone in this audience would agree that we're living in an age of relentless, disruptive change for businesses and governments. Ceaseless information flows, threats and uncertainty, the growth and proliferation of data and apps, new channels, new markets, and new business models. In this environment, you need IT solutions that can move at the speed of business to take advantage of new ideas, new business opportunities, competitive threats, and shifting customer needs. You know, I recently read a report that said, IT strategy and business strategy are no longer separate. They have become inseparable. And I couldn't agree more with that statement. And that's why we've worked very hard during the past few years to establish Hewlett Packard as the best technology partner on the planet for customers and partners, the best technology partner you could possibly have. We want to help you align IT with your business, help you build the speed and flexibility required to succeed in the new style of IT, which is actually a new style of business powered by IT putting you at the center of every decision that we make. The good news is we have done much of the hard work to need, needed to keep us at the very forefront of our industry. Our R&D investments are up and they are paying off. We've brought new innovative products and services to market, which you'll see right here at Discover. In our enterprise business, this includes all flash three-par storage, HP OneView, software-defined networking, new Gen 9 compute offerings, enterprise solutions on demand, HP Haven and HP Helium, as well as some key acquisitions such as Voltage Security, Context Stream, Eucalyptus, and of course, Aruba Networks. In printing and personal systems, we've introduced HP page-wide array printers, that print across any width, however great, in a single pass. Printers that are faster, smaller, and more energy efficient. Mobile solutions built for the way businesses work. And the HP EliteBook Folio 1020, the world's thinnest and lightest business class notebook that won best of show at the Consumer Electronics Show. And supporting both businesses, we've introduced business model innovations through HP Financial Services that reflect how customers want to use and pay for their IT. But our work isn't done. In the kind of environment we all face today, I would say the work is never done. 
but I can confidently say that we are making real progress. And this progress has enabled us to take a deep look at our company and what we can do to better serve all of you. We asked ourselves, how can we put HP in the best position to not only survive, but thrive? Not only to respond to market changes, but to define new markets. How can we better empower customers to take the IT journey that's right for them? How can we renew our commitment to make you successful? And as you know, our answer was to separate into two new industry-leading Fortune 50 companies, Hewlett Packard Enterprise and HP Inc. Hewlett Packard Enterprise will build on HP's leading position in services, software, servers, storage, networking, converged systems, plus our Helion Cloud platform. And we will continue to invest in and invent entirely new ways to compute capabilities that go way beyond the conversations that our competitors are having. Capabilities that will be able to support the demands of the new style of business to more, effect, more effectively and efficiently deliver the outcomes that matter to you. So whether it's running a more traditional IT environment more effectively, or making the inevitable transition to a secure, agile, cloud-enabled, mobile-ready future, or most likely doing both. Now, as for HP Inc., it will be the world's leading personal systems and printing company. And it will deliver innovation that empowers people to create, interact, and inspire like never before. You've seen some of that great innovation with the announcement of MultiJet Fusion, our new 3D printing technology, and Sprout by HP, our first product in a new category that we created called immersive computing. Now, I think most of you know, I will be the president and CEO of Hewlett Packard Enterprise and chairman of HP Inc. Dion Weisler will be president and CEO of HP Inc. We expect the separation to be effective at the beginning of, beginning of our next fiscal year, which is the 1st of November, 2015. And we're confident that the separation will give both Hewlett Packard Enterprise and HP Inc. a new level of focus, agility, and efficiency. We will be even more innovative and even more competitive. And we hope to have an even deeper connection to each and every one of you. Today, though, we want to focus on the future of Hewlett Packard Enterprise to help you understand what kind of company we will be where we're making our big bets, and what you can expect from us. When we announced the separation, we knew the name Hewlett Packard Enterprise would carry a rich legacy. We wanted to build on the past and create a brand that supports the business we are today and helps define what we will become in the future. We wanted to create an identity that also represents our simpler structure and more focused portfolio. We wanted to send a clear message that the aim of the new organization is to be the best at serving the enterprise needs of your business. You'll see glimpses of our new brand and logo throughout this event. But a little explanation is probably in order to help you understand what it means for our new company and how it represents our singular commitment to you, our customers, and our partners. So take a look at our new logo. It is a powerful expression of who we are. There are two things we really wanted to get across. First, the simplicity of the logo is symbolic. That's what Hewlett Packard Enterprise will be about, making it simple for our customers and partners to do business with us, be precise in our engineering and our innovation. Second is the color and shape. There's not a lot of green in our industry the color green signals growth and opportunity, and my personal favorite, sustainability. The rectangle symbolizes a window of opportunity for what we can build together. When it is all said and done, we want the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise to represent both the rich legacy of HP and the exciting future ahead of us and ahead of you. A future where IT and business truly are inseparable 
where organizations can turn ideas into reality faster than ever before. This last point about turning ideas into reality is a critical piece of our strategy to deliver IT solutions for the new style of business. And as I meet with customers in diverse industries around the world, it's clear to me that we're living in an idea economy. Now, some people have called it the digital economy, others the application economy, or even the mobile economy. But to us, the idea economy is all of those things and more. I'd like to show you a preview of a series which you can see at the Hewlett Packard Enterprise booth featuring three companies, Vimeo, One King's Lane, and Doc to Dish. They represent the power of the idea economy and how an entrepreneur's vision can fundamentally change markets. You absolutely have to keep pushing to evolve. The key is staying true to who you serve and what you're setting out to do, but the way in which you're going to do that is always going to evolve. The velocity with which we have to move in order to satisfy just the basic nature of the model created a culture of agility. You do all of your research, and then there's this aha moment where it bounces off the conventional wall and it leads you to something that you had no idea that you would ever think of. A new class of entrepreneurs are challenging the status quo, revolutionizing entire industries at a pace and scale never seen before. I don't think we understood how disruptive what we were doing was going to be. A lot of people do not like what you're doing because you are changing the playing field. There's the question of, Will anybody care about this? You know, does this stand a chance of working? In an ever-changing landscape, businesses must adapt and use technology to rise above the competition. Welcome to the idea economy. So ideas, of course, have always fueled business success. They built companies, markets, and industry. But I think there's a difference today. The ability to turn an idea into a new product, a new capability, a new business, or even a new industry has never been easier or more accessible. Easier for you and easier for your competitors, maybe even some that you don't know exist today. And this presents an opportunity and a challenge for most enterprises. On the one hand, Cloud, mobile, big data, and analytics give you the tools to accelerate speed and time to value, to combine applications and data to create dramatically new experiences or even new markets. But on the other hand, most organizations have been built with rigid, quite inflexible IT infrastructures that are costly to maintain and that make it difficult, if not impossible, to implement new ideas quickly. Today, an entrepreneur with a good idea has access to all the infrastructure and resources that a traditional Fortune 1000 company would have. And they can pay for it all with a credit card. They can rent compute on demand. They can get a SaaS ERP system, use PayPal or Square for transactions, and they can market using Facebook or Google. And they can even have FedEx run their supply chain. The days of needing millions of dollars to launch a new company or bring a new idea to market are fading very fast. And you don't have to look much farther than the recent, company, than recent companies like the ones I just highlighted, Vimeo, One King's Lane, or Doc to Dish, which you just saw, or with more common names like Salesforce, Airbnb, Netflix, and Pandora to see how the idea economy is exploding. And then how about Uber? Uber's impact has been dramatic since it launched its application to connect riders and drivers in 2009. Without owning a single car, it now serves more than 311 cities in 58 countries and has completely disrupted the taxi industry. 
San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency says that cab usage has dropped 65% in San Francisco in two years. In a technology-driven world, I gotta say, it takes more than good ideas to be successful. Success today is defined by how quickly an enterprise can turn ideas into value, how quickly you can experiment, learn fast, test, tune, and make it even better. And that's the differentiator, no matter what industry you are in. Uber didn't need to invent a new technology to build their business. They just had to take advantage of the explosion of smartphones and mobile apps to design a compelling customer experience and invent a whole new way of doing business. But this isn't just about Uber being able to execute a good idea. It is also about the inability of the cab industry to act quickly to transform its own business models to compete. Ask yourself this question. Did they have the time to respond to the market disruption that Uber represented? Absolutely, Uber was started in 2009. But they needed an IT infrastructure that would allow them to pivot when the inevitable disruption arrived, and they didn't have that. The taxi industry were still operating on CB radios. These examples are a warning. Every Fortune 1000 company today is at risk of missing a market opportunity, not securing their enterprise, and being disrupted by a new idea or a new business model. And what's the common element here? Time. Even with great ideas, even with all the great technology available to you, time to value is still your biggest enemy and your greatest opportunity. You know as well as anyone else that time for IT projects and new applications used to be measured in years and months. Today it has become weeks and even days. Increasingly, it's shrinking to hours. So you have to ask yourself, how quickly can I capitalize on a new idea? How rapidly can I seize a new opportunity for my company? How fast can I respond to a new competitor that threatens my business? There's some good news here for established companies. The same technologies that make it easier for new companies to get started are also enabling enterprises to increase their speed, adapt quickly to changing business models, and achieve faster time to value. The winners are those companies from startups to the largest of enterprises who know how to use the power of IT to quickly fuel the power of ideas. Thriving in the idea economy requires a new style of business, and this is where HP leads like no other company. We've been helping our customers and partners deal with the biggest IT challenges and major shifts in technology for decades. Today, this means helping you manage traditional IT better while enabling you to migrate to the public and private cloud at a pace and in a way that is appropriate for your business. This new style of business demands a new style of IT, and every single one of you is a participant and a driver on this journey. But you have to pick a transformation partner with the vision and breadth to create the best possible future. And make no mistake, we are that partner. In the most basic form, that is the mission of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We can take your IT environments and make them more efficient, more productive, and more secure as we bridge the traditional to the new. We enable organizations to act rapidly on ideas by creating, consuming, and reconfiguring new solutions, experiences, and business models and we will deliver infrastructure that is built from components that be, can, can be composed and recomposed quickly and easily to meet the shifting demands of the applications driving your enterprise. One of the first steps in achieving this kind of flexibility and agility is to break down the old infrastructure silos that make enterprises adverse to new ideas internally and vulnerable to new ideas externally. 
It's no good designing compelling new experiences and services if your infrastructure cannot support them. The right compute platform can have a significant impact on business outcomes and performance. Storage that thinks as much as it stores. Networking that moves information faster and securely than ever before. Orchestration and management software that lets you know what is happening and where and provides predictive capability. The resources and solutions that we provide is an important reality. We all live in a hybrid world with a blend of public cloud, private cloud, and traditional IT. Apps and data are everywhere, and that's why infrastructure isn't one size fits all anymore. It isn't just in your data center. It isn't just in the cloud. Your infrastructure has to be everywhere at the right cost, with the right service offering, at the right performance, with the right management, at the right scale. Some of our competitors come at this from a services only perspective, others just from software or just hardware. We're the only company that brings it all to you. The company best equipped to build a bridge from where your IT is today to where it must be in the future for your organization to continue to thrive and grow in your industry. And the good news is we don't dictate to you how to do it. HP can assist you on that journey that is unique for you. The way you want to consume, the way you want to transform, the outcomes that you want, the support that you need, when and where you need it, and importantly, with the right financial architecture for you. Today, we are defining our focus for Hewlett Packard Enterprise with the launch of four new transformation areas that you have told us are the most important to your business. The first is to transform to a hybrid infrastructure. This is really about two things, getting better value from your existing infrastructure and creating and delivering new value quickly and continuously from all of your applications. Infrastructure matters more than ever in this new world, but we need a new kind of infrastructure a hybrid foundation that maximizes performance and cost. We help you build a cloud that works for you, one that scales and works with your infrastructure. Only HP optimizes all your applications, traditional, mobile, in the cloud, and in the data center. The second transformation area is that the protecting of your digital assets. The threat landscape is wider and more diverse than ever before. No one else can provide a more complete management of risk in all its forms than HP. And risk means more than security threats. It includes backup and recovery. We have a wide range of solutions to help keep your business up and running in the event of a disaster. Third, more and more companies recognize that they need to empower a data-driven organization. HP has bet on open source, low cost solutions that allow you to use 100% of your business data, human data, and machine data to generate real time actionable insights. And the result is better and faster decision making. And finally, you tell us you're increasingly focused on enabling workplace productivity. Tomorrow's digital workplace is everywhere delivering a great experience to employees and customers everywhere, anytime, on any device is the last and most critical step. We will help you deliver rich digital and mobile experiences to customers, employees, and partners. So these four transformation areas represent our view of where the market is headed and what you, our customers, will need. Being successful in these areas takes more than services, more than technology, more than software. It requires a transformation partner able to bring all these elements together, aligned to your industry and your enterprise. And they are at the heart of what Hewlett Packard Enterprise will deliver. Now, I've just touched the surface, so I wanna now turn the stage over to our team, who will go into some greater detail in each of these four transformation areas. 
First up will be Executive Vice President of HP Enterprise Services, Mike Nefkins. Mike? <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's great to be here today, and I'm really excited to be able to share uh, our vision with you. I'm also really excited to be out here on stage with you because those puppets are back there, and they're starting to freak me out. So it's, uh, it's good to be up here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take each of the four transformation areas and share with you what our point of view is, the insights we've gained from helping thousands of clients around the world, our best advice on how to get started, and probably most importantly, the outcomes that we've helped clients achieve. So let's go ahead and get started with a quick video. So it's all about transforming to a hybrid infrastructure. And for over 75 years, HP's been inventing to help you get the most value from your applications. In the idea economy, this is how many of your best ideas will come to life. The fact of the matter is, in the new style of business, you depend more than ever on applications, but the landscape is changing radically. By 2020, there are gonna be 7.6 billion people with 100 billion connected devices and things requiring over a trillion applications. Most of that one trillion will be made up of a new breed of mobile apps, cloud native and web scale apps, apps to power the internet of things, apps to engage, apps to analyze, and apps to understand. Frickin' apps everywhere. But at the same time, you need to continue to support and integrate with the workloads that currently run your business. And this is a massive challenge for all of us. You need to be able to bridge the applications and workloads of today with the applications and workloads of tomorrow. And these are different in how they're designed, hosted, and consumed. They have different infrastructure requirements, and we need to think differently about how we test, deliver, and optimize them. I bet if I polled the audience, we'd find that the majority of you are managing a hybrid environment, and you're trying to optimize that environment to free up funds to invest in the new. In fact, 90% of enterprises believe their implementation of hybrid is lagging where it needs to be. The good news is, we support some of the world's best. So let me share with you what we've learned so you can get to your outcomes faster. First, you have to make leaps not just steps to hybrid. In our experience, the best journeys are bold moves to new platforms and software as a service. And sometimes it's best to move straight to cloud, even for old, non-virtualized environments. So let business processes be your guide, where you can actually change a process or a customer experience. That's the place you want to start, not just where it's technically easy. So force the hard decision and make each application and workload to the right platform. Next, act like an internal service provider driving greater alignment between IT and the business. Finally, you cannot scale without automation and orchestration. This is probably the most important step you can take because it builds the foundation for the speed and agility your applications will need. Let's be honest, the journey to hybrid is hard. It will be different for every one of you, and it's not linear. But there's no doubt you have to do it to survive and thrive. That's why your choice of transformation partner matters. So let's talk about getting the outcomes you need. CIOs around the world are being challenged to add more value by rapidly deploying and developing new business solutions. Solutions that enable new products, new services, new business models, and experiences to help you compete. And the only way you can do this is with a flexible platform that embraces cloud in all its forms. So you do this by first deploying and managing private cloud, then brokering cloud services, and then extending and modernizing new apps and workloads. 
In many cases, you'll be doing all of this simultaneously. But as I said earlier, doing this effectively means first you have to accelerate your current environment. So what I'd like to do now is bring up Senior Vice President of Enterprise Group, my good friend, Antonio Neri, to share with you how to get most out of a hybrid world. Hey, Mike. Thank you, Mike. HP has helped many of you start your journey by converging virtualizing your infrastructure, saving billions of dollars, hours, and watts. Many of you tell me today you are ready to take the next step to automate, orchestrate, and transform your infrastructure and IT operations. The advantage of partnering with HP is that some of you will want to buy and build, some will just want advice on how to start this journey, and some others just want to know how to consume it. HP can deliver the right approach from finance to accelerate all your journey's transformations. So how you get started the journey with HP? The reality is that everyone in this room has legacy applications. Legacy meaning everything that's sitting today in a data center. Many of those applications are very core and strategic to your mission. But you also need to build the bridge for tomorrow, applications, workloads, and data. And to do so, you have to converge and virtualize your infrastructure. This includes modernizing your compute, your storage, your network foundation to give those overloads the performance and the scale and the agility that you need. At the same time, you can, convert, we, you can consume that infrastructure in a converged type of approach, where it's pre-integrated or engineered system related. We think in a couple of two to three years, 30% or more of that infrastructure will be consumed in a converged type of uh, solution. NHP is a unique position to help you in that journey. With the next generation of technology, HP can help you bring forward applications so you can take advantage of the agility and the performance and free up time and cost to drive the innovation you need. HP 3 Part is a great example. And today, we are announcing a new class of enterprise flash storage with our new HP 3, 3 Part flash family. Let me introduce to you Manish Gol, which is our senior vice president of the HP storage, who can tell more about the innovation we are bringing to the market today. Manish is on the Discover floor, so Manish, over to you. Thank you, Antonio. And let me add my own welcome to HP Discover 2015. HP storage is on fire, so much so that it got me out of retirement and made me want to join HP storage. We are leading the industry in three areas. The first is flash. We are the fastest growing all flash array vendor in the entire industry. The second is software defined and hyperconverged. With our, it's a natural for HP, with our compute assets and our storage assets, we package them together in a hyperconverged appliance, and that is doing really well in the market. And the third is data protection and store ones and our ability to dramatically simplify the backup challenges. On Flash, that industry is at a tipping point. We have three very exciting announcements today and this week for you. The first is almost a four terabyte flash drive. Look at this, the size of an iPod, four terabytes. The most important part other than the density is its cost point. This is a drive that is getting close to the cost point of a 10K hard drive. And it is going to make the hard drives almost extinct. Also, we are announcing today our new all flash array systems, the 20,000 series. This is amazing. The density and the performance of the system is unparalleled in the whole industry. At 12 petabytes, this is absolutely the densest system in the entire industry. So with this system, with the four terabyte drives, and the third announcement we're making is our data protection services that have been designed for the world of all flash. So with these announcements, we are absolutely taking the next step in the transformation of the data center to an all flash data center. We have a lot of interesting things to share with you on the show floor. Come by, take a look. 
meet with our people, learn anything that you would like to. Also, right after the keynote at 4.30, I'm holding a general session on storage and look forward to seeing most of you there. Have a great show. Thank you for joining us this week. Back to you, Antonio. Let's give a huge round of applause to my nation team. Incredible innovation to bring the agility and the cost and the performance you need to move in this new style of, of IT. So that was just a peek. I encourage you to go to the Discover show floor so you can talk to the people, so they can walk you through how we're doing this. Now, it is clear that when you look at that, that's not just enough. It is clear also to us, you can't just throw people to uh, the problem of managing your infrastructure. The demand for continuous delivery makes it critical to bring automation, orchestration, and advanced analytic to your IT operations. Most of our customers start with solutions, one of my preferred solutions, HP One View, that enables access to a more programmatic approach to the infrastructure. And together with HP Ops Analytics, we can predict issues and avoid outages. What is the result of that? The result of that, that we can free up resources by automating, provisioning, patching, and orchestrating end-to-end -end processes like change management and disaster recovery. We can help you radically accelerate your application workflows so you can take the, the application from go from an idea to an app to our business outcomes as fast as you can. Most of the IT organizations are becoming now a service provider and they need to be a broker of application and services regardless of where they are or where they are hosted. First, let's talk about deploying a private cloud. As a leader in the private cloud space, we have helped more than 2,500 enterprises to create the flexible foundation so you can, whether you can run it or we can run it for you. We are helping many of you improve user experiences. With HP, customers can create a single catalog of all IT services and applications. We offer great solutions like our HP cloud system, cloud service automation, and HP Propel, which is our sole service portal for delivering all your IT services. And finally, we can help you extend and modernize your cloud native applications with scale in a hyper-converged infrastructure powered by the HP Helion OpenStack. But today, we are making the industry number one private cloud even better with announcement of the HP Helion Cloud System 9. And to talk about that announcement, we have Bill Hilf, which is our Senior Vice President of HP Cloud Product and Services Management, also on the floor. And I would like to pass it to Bill so he can talk about this great innovation. Bill, over to you. Thanks, Antonio. Hi, everybody. I'm here in the Helion Discover Zone, and I'm surrounded by 18 Helion pods that are showcasing our cloud portfolio, solving real-world business needs. Now today, I am thrilled to announce our latest release of the cloud system family, Cloud System 9, our flagship cloud solution built to help you deliver cloud benefits broadly and deeply throughout your organization. A cloud system integrates the best of innovation across HP. The core of Helion Cloud System is the Helion platform, built upon our enterprise-grade OpenStack and Cloud Foundry. Cloud System 9 also includes the ability to map intelligently your apps and workloads to specific infrastructure. We also have pre-built-in support for Helion Eucalyptus, which lets you run AWS applications on-premise. And very importantly, this release includes enhancements to the end-to-end -end automation and orchestration across both cloud and traditional environments. So I hear from our customers all the time, they say, Bill, I believe in the cloud value proposition, but how do I get there realistically? How do I bridge today and evolve to tomorrow? So let me show you now how the Helion platform can help you transform your existing traditional applications to the cloud. Now here you can see an example of an enterprise expense management application. We see lots of these across all of our customers. This runs on a typical three-tier application architecture, a web, an app, a data tier, each with their own dedicated virtual machines and dedicated hardware. Now to roll a system like this out 
We know how this goes for IT. This can be painful, it can take weeks, it can take months, it can frustrate your developers and business partners. So how does the cloud help in a scenario like this? Well, you can take this application as is, no changes, and move it onto cloud system and start to get immediate return on your investment. You can see here this application in a self-service portal where those same developers and business partners can provision this entire stack within just minutes now. So the second question I get from customers is how do I build an environment for my developers to build true cloud native applications? How do I get to that DevOps or that CI CD model where I'm able to deliver services at the speed that my business is moving at? So we've taken that expense application and we've re-architected it upon Cloud Foundry, our development platform, which allows us to have a true microservice environment. Now this development platform running on Cloud System gives developers a full workflow with application level high availability, self-service, and as you can see here, auto scaling at the service level, as well as a Docker-based runtime for all of those services a powerful and fast experience for developers to build true cloud native services. And as you can see, our final application here looks great. The user experience certainly improved, but most importantly, this application was faster and easier to build, simpler to manage, and much more scalable. So these are just a couple examples of what we have here in the Helion Zone. I welcome you all to come down. We're going to take you through our demos, help you see how Helion is solving real world business challenges today. So thank you very much. Antonio, back to you. Thanks, Bill. This is the reason why HP is the number one private cloud solution on the market. We continue to innovate. We continue to help you deploy services faster to bring the agility at the cost that you need. Now, the final area where you can get started today is empowering your developers. The reality is that we are living in a world of increasing developer-driven world. One of the crown jewels of HP is our portfolio of open platforms, management software and services for application development and delivery to help you uh, your, make your developers as productive as they can be. If you are having a hard time finding the developers with the right skill set. We have an army of seasoned people, developers, and as well advisory services that we can help you accelerate your development and business objectives. Customers are already achieving significant business outcomes when they work with HP. Together with our partners, we can optimize what you have today while cutting costs and improving productivity. Here are some examples. With our HP Helion Cloud System, allows you to boost productivity by 75% while cutting costs by 40%. And we help you achieve more with automation, delivering five times more return on investment. We also help you accelerate developer output up to 30 times faster. And finally, you can gain the ability to drive end-to-end -end transformation of your entire infrastructure, cutting OPEX by almost 40%. Now, you don't need to hear it from me. We have a great example today, a great story I would like to share with you. I would like to invite on stage the CEO of Imagine Communication, Charles Bodd, so you can have a conversation with me. Hey, Charlie. How you doing? How you doing, Antonio? Thanks, thanks for being with us today. Well, thanks for the opportunity. We would like to share with the team here our amazing story, how you're working with HP. But the first thing, the first question I have for you, is just to make sure everybody understands Imagine Communication. Can you profile your company, what you do, and which sector you play? So we like to think of ourselves as a $400 million video infrastructure startup. Uh, we have 3,000 customers in 185 countries. We power 80% of all the top media companies around the world. We manage 25,000 video channels every day. So. We like to think that we're playing a pretty vital role in consumers and businesses who are uh, we're looking at how video is changing the world. Now, y your industry is going through a significant transformation, and obviously technology is at the core of that transformation. So can you tell a little bit how you're embracing that technology transformation to advance your company going sure, forward? Sure, sure. 
So, I mean, you don't have to be in the IT world to realize what video is doing to disrupt and, and really uh, create the new currency. And for us, you know, our customers, the traditional TV networks and broadcast stations, the uh, MVPDs, the AT&T, Verizon's Comcast of the world, um, are going through what I would refer to as generational change. Uh, there's been more change, I think, in the last five years than we've seen in the last 50 years. And I think in the last two years, we, we've seen more change in our industry than ever. Uh, and so when you think about, you know, disruption, you know, we, we think disruption is really an understatement. Yep. Uh, in fact, many of our customers are, are sort of referring to today's times as almost chaos. And so um, what we're doing, I mean, for us, the opportunity and, and the challenge is really how do we effectively transition today's SDI baseband world to IP? How do we transition, you know, today's proprietary hardware and software solutions to an open, common off-the-shelf computing platform? How do we take today's on-premise technology and move some part or all of it to a cloud virtualized architecture? And how do you take this notion that traditionally was all about watching linear TV in the family room and moving it to small screens and TV everywhere? In fact, uh, at the National Association of Broadcasters, uh, which is one of the largest shows in the world that uh, just took place in April, one of the most iconic companies in the world, Disney ABC, just announced that they're moving their broadcast operations to the cloud. It's pretty revolutionary for our pretty industry, and, and uh, they're doing it with Imagine, so we're pretty excited. So how we together are we gonna change this industry? Obviously, talk about some of the trends, how things are gonna evolve, but how HP and Imagine Communication are working together? Well, we as a company, I mean, we've really transitioned who we are to really a, a software and applications company. And I think what's interesting for us and I think what your customers here are really validating is that HP has really become the leader in server, storage, and compute. And for everything we do, uh, we need a strategic partner that we can take advantage of in that area. And so creating this comprehensive end-to-end -end video solution is something that all of our customers are looking for, and they're looking to be able to do that uh, as an integrated offering. And, you know, if you look at what we're trying to do right now with you is to, you know, if you think about today's world where everybody has a DVR, um, we're transitioning that whole world with next generation video packaging and transcoding, uh, allowing our customers to dynamically insert ads and creating with HP a cloud video platform. So taking everything that's, you know, resident in the home and virtualizing that in, in data centers. So that's, that's pretty significant. So, I mean, selfishly for us, we, we see ourselves as sort of a lightning rod for, for HP's uh, hardware and software. Now, you have a lot of choices out there, but, you know, to pick a partner. So let me ask the final question. Why HP? Well, Antonio, you guys are amazing. <laughs> um, no, I think the most important thing is we, we share a common vision and strategy. Um, there's virtually no overlap. Um, you know, I, I was telling somebody backstage that I think what's impressed me most uh, as, a, as a smaller company that, that you know, we, we tend to think very entrepreneurial, we run pretty fast. I think we've been very impressed with uh, HP and how entrepreneurial you are for a large company, how fast uh, you guys have been able to, to run with us. And, and ultimately, probably the most important thing is, you know, you guys have become a trusted partner. And, and in the end, uh, that's probably the most important thing. Well, listen, Charlie, we really appreciate the partnership. We are committed to make this partnership a success. But most important, we are committed to transform the industry, to enable innovation, to change the way people, you know, entertain themselves, how they access content. So you should expect more from us. So I appreciate you sharing the story today with the group. So I want to give Charlie a round Thank of you. applause. Thank you. So with that, I would like to bring back my friend Mike Nefkin so he can put the final thoughts about this particular very critical foundational transformation area. So thank you. Thanks, Antonio and Charlie, and uh, really that was great. So it's always uh, fabulous to hear from our uh, customers directly. So as you can see, HP believes the world is becoming increasingly hybrid, and we recognize that the journey is hard. But we've helped a lot of clients achieve measurable outcomes, and we can bring that experience to bear for you. Now, let's move on to our second transformation area. We'll roll the video.
retailer says the credit card numbers to the I really love that video. And uh, as you can see, protection matters more than ever. Traditionally, this was all about protecting apps and data. But the new school of thinking is you need to protect the interactions. And no one is able to do that more holistically than HP can. At HP, we believe protecting your digital enterprise is about both managing risk and security. And as Meg said earlier, it's about accelerating time to value. You have to move fast, but you have to do it without breaking things and without putting your enterprise at risk. In the new digital world, risk and threats are everywhere, and they're increasing in diversity and complexity. There's always the risk of natural disaster, the need for data protection and compliance, and we're faced with more sophisticated cyber criminals. In addition, new threats are emerging from hybrid and mobile, dissolving the traditional perimeter, scattering our data everywhere, and creating new exposures across the Internet of Things. The reality is that in today's world, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when the breach will occur. Now, what we've learned from protecting not only ourselves, but thousands of clients is, that if security and risk protection are not integrated up front and planned for in all its forms, the cost later to fix it can be 10 times more than what it would have been to prevent it. Next, it's, it's important to focus on managing risk because let's be honest, you can't eliminate it. So you need a single view that balances regulatory requirements, cyber threats, asset protection, and business change. Business users and customers won't tolerate policies that eliminate risk because that eliminates the benefits of the connected world. So the key is protect the most important parts of your estate. Understand how people can access it and create policies and tools that users will work within. Every day, we see how the bad guys are growing up. So we need to get smarter and think more like them. We're no longer protecting ourselves against lone actors or hackers. Now we're up against cyber criminals in nation states, highly funded, organized groups that are motivated by profit or access to information. Today, effective protection requires insight in both the nature and motivation of the attacks, but unfortunately, most businesses don't know who's attacking them, why, or what they're after. Now, with over 5,000 security professionals, software assets, and 10 global security operations centers across the world, HP is learning more by the minute about who these actors are, their tools, and motivations. Recently, we formed a first-of-a-kind partnership with FireEye and Mandiant to bolster our capabilities in this space. Together, we're bringing incident response, compromise assessments, and advanced threat management services to market to reduce client exposures, recover faster, and reduce potential change. Finally, breaches are not events, they're processes. Today, the worst breaches are not the one-time attack or thefts. They're the system vulnerabilities exploited over long periods of time. This means it's just as important to know when you've been breached and how to shut it down as it is to prevent the breach in the first place. So what I'd like to do now, and to talk a bit more about how to get your journey started around protecting the digital enterprise, I'd like to bring up our EVP for HP Software, Robert Young Johns. Hey, Robert? Great. Thanks, Mike. Great. Well, thank you, Mike. I think that was a, a great introduction. And what I want to talk a little bit about is the products and capabilities we have to help you deliver a more secure enterprise. I think when I look at the totality of what we have in HP, we have best of class almost everywhere you want to look in this space. And if there's one message I'd like you to take away from this session, this transformation area, if you've got any concern about security within your enterprise, if you've been breached, if you want help in how you harden your processes, the company to call is HP. 
So when we put this all together, we think we're extremely well positioned to be your partner of choice in securing your enterprise and making your enterprise hardened against the inevitable attacks that are going to happen uh, over the coming months and years. So how do you do this? What's the journey you need to go through? I think the first thing you have to do is understand what's coming. This is about being proactive. This is about identifying vulnerabilities, assessing your capabilities. It's people and process. And we can help you here with HP Risk Management Services. Mike talked about the 5,000 professionals we have who every day are monitoring data centers, are seeing real-world attacks as they happen. We can encapsulate that experience. We can bring it to you and help you harden your own processes and people to make sure you're better protected. You know, secondly, it's about how you secure the digital interactions by hardening uh, your defenses. And one of the areas we're seeing most vulnerability today is in the area of applications. And we've got a great solution there, which is in Fortify, which helps you scan code to detect vulnerabilities in that code in advance. And in fact, we're finding that if you put Fortify into your DevOps chain, not only do you get better applications that are more secure, the applications are actually less likely to fail in production. That step of pushing an application through Fortify not only helps security, it helps overall application quality. The third, and this is probably the most important, is to detect and manage the inevitable breaches. And this is all about analytics. And in fact, I'm a firm believer that the whole era or area of security is going to become a big data problem. It's how do you detect that someone's got into your enterprise before they do damage? One of the most stunning facts about security is it's over 200 days on average before an enterprise detects that an attacker has got inside the walls. Because the way a breach happens is typically a little silent at first. Just see, can I get in? If I can get in, I'm just going to sit there and wait and look and watch. And over time, I'm going to start to build up. And it's only 200 days when the attack starts in earnest that the typical detection system picks it up. This is an analytics problem. And we've got amazing analytic tools, leading with ArcSight, that could help you detect these breaches earlier before those people have managed to create damage within your enterprise. And we're extending that analytics capability very quickly to other areas and got some exciting announcements forthcoming at our Protect conference uh, later this year. And finally, it's really important that whatever else you do, you make sure you've got the right recovery tools, such that if the worst happens and someone damages your data, you can get back and get run up and running again quickly. And this is where we have great products in the data protection area and also great hardware, such as HP Store Once, that fits alongside that. So we've got a great set of solutions here that can help you on the journey to getting a more secure enterprise. But you know, as we're looking forward into the problems of security, one area that we're increasingly thinking about is how you protect, better protect the most sensitive data within your enterprise. And that's how do you use encryption on a broader scale. And in this sense, we've got some really exciting news to share here. You know, this sensitive data is everywhere. And organizations are increasingly thinking they've got to protect not just the system, not just the external interfaces, they've got to protect some of the data itself. And that's why we acquired a company called Voltage uh, earlier this year. Voltage's solutions will encrypt sensitive data at the point of creation and then continue that encryption through the life cycle so there's no need to go and change and re-architect systems. What Voltage specializes in is something we call format-preserving encryption. That means if you take a social security number, for example, and encrypt it, it still looks to the application like a social security number. And that means you don't have to change and re-architect your applications in order to use encryption in a broader scale. And this capability that it has extends all the way from the data center to cloud and Hadoop environments under a single framework. And we work this alongside HP Atala, which really protects uh, information in transit. And we announced uh, HP Atala here at Discover uh, last year. So I believe our solution set is unique in this industry. We can help you see around the corner. And we've got really good proven results to establish that. 
For example, we've been number one four years in a row amongst all vendors who go out there to detect vulnerabilities. And in fact, we scan over 100 billion events every month. I think when we look at our encryption solutions, we believe they can create a 20% better ROI. With ArcSight, we think we can improve the speed to resolve anomalies dramatically and therefore reduce the IT and associated uh, IT outages. And with HP Store Once and our data protection family, we can give 17 times faster protection and five times faster recovery than the industry leading solutions out there. So it's not only that we have a great set of products, a great set of services to help you, we've got proven results to demonstrate that we are a real leader in this space. So going back to how I started, if you remember anything from this session, if you've got any issue on security, if you want to harden and protect your enterprise, HP is the right partner for you. So that's our overview of what we do. But I'd like you to hear another perspective now, and that's from one of our customers. This is Microsoft, who's partnering very closely with HP to stay that one step ahead of the bad guys. Over the last 15 years, IT services have evolved from a monolithic corporate provided and corporate controlled service offering into a much more diverse basket of user owned devices, third party services and mobile corporate services. When choosing a partner for Microsoft to protect customer data, it was really critical for us that the partner was not just providing point-based solutions, it was the integrated value across the broad spectrum, because we think about security as a defense in depth method. Having really great intelligence at the endpoints, all the way from the device to the operating system to the application, is really the best way we're going to have proactive and reactive defense capabilities to threats. HP was a provider that could do that for us. HP was a natural choice for Microsoft. By providing one of the leading SIM products, it gives our analysts the ability to more quickly identify and respond to security events as they happen within our environment and across our user base. What ArcSight's done to give us that kind of integrated view and holistic view across the platforms really wasn't even the capability that was there four years ago. So it's been super helpful for us. It's allowed us to really automate a lot of the more fundamental tasks and speed up a lot of the more sophisticated response tasks that our SOC analysts have to perform which means we need fewer people to do the same work. The most important thing for us in the rate of change is how do we move security upstream in all the processes we do. And so things like HP Fortify is a great tool for us to actually move that up the development life cycle. HP and Microsoft are actively engaged in ensuring that the latest security technologies are fully integrated with the latest platform features that Microsoft releases. We really were looking for a vendor that transcended to a partnership beyond the transaction. How do we share data? How do we share intelligence? How do we share operational procedures? And then how do we go to market with those together? Because we have to be aligned. And HP was a company who really fit that mold for us. Thanks. So protecting the digital enterprise is top of mind for every CEO. And HP has the most comprehensive set of products and services in the industry. And as you saw from the video, the investment Microsoft has made in this space with HP is a great testament. Now, let's move on to our third transformation area, empowering the data-driven di organization. This is all about uncovering the right insights, delivering those insights to the right people and at the right moment. So you have to admit the benefits of the data-driven organization are pretty cool. Unfortunately, the reality is that the big data under delivers by 85 to 90%, leaving the benefit of your investment unrealized. So how do you change that? Now there's several lessons we've learned from helping clients, but let me just share three with you. First, you have to optimize for the data that you have today. And this means optimizing your core infrastructure and hardware to allow for evolving data sources like media and text. Second, 
you need to drive continuous analytics into your business processes. Insights have to happen real time and be embedded into the decision flow, not created as separate events. Third, don't forget about your old friend BI. You have to modernize it. Legacy BI sources are not properly monetized for two reasons. First, they don't have all their new data sources integrated. And second, they don't properly combine data from existing data warehouses. Now, by doing just these three things, you can realize more of the benefits from your data, turning them into insights and better business outcomes. So what I'd like to do now is turn it back over to Robert to talk about the technology, and then I'll come and wrap it back up with some specific client great, examples. Thanks. Robert, over to you. Hey, Mike, another great introduction. I think that statistic about the way in which enterprises are feeling that big data projects aren't delivering on their potential is really the core of our strategy. Because uh, we've got a unique point of view, and that is we want to bring analytics to bear on the everyday problems that the enterprise faces. We want to transition away that big data is somehow a solution in itself. It's a sort of series of science projects and turn it into the practical value creating solutions uh, you have today. Now, one of the big challenges we face in this space, as Mike alluded to, is that many of the tools were really designed for business data. They weren't designed for the sort of data that we see every day today in the enterprise, the data that's growing fastest. So relational databases, data warehouses, business intelligent tools that have served us for many years may have been great when it was dealing with typical business information. But when it comes to the new types of data, they're not the right platform because things are really different right now. Human data and machine data are growing 10 times faster than traditional business information and are creating a whole new set of challenges. So as we think about this, we've taken a very different point of view. We started with Hadoop, and around Hadoop, we built an amazing platform, which is HP Haven. And incidentally, the H in Haven stands for Hadoop. And this is designed to handle not just your business information, but also human data and machine data, and then be able to deliver analytics across a complete wide range of applications and business problems in the moments that matter. And these can be very pragmatic things that you face every day. It could be, how do I improve my IT operations management? How do I get predictive about the problems that I'm going to face in managing an effective IT operation? How can I get predictive application lifecycle? How can I take all the data that I collect as applications go through the DevOps lifecycle and turn that into a predictive tool that will tell me whether an application will succeed or fail in production? It can be about security, as I talked about a few minutes ago. How do I bring this platform to bear on the masses of log data that exist about the interactions that people and devices have with the network? It can be business problems like how do I optimize my supply chain? Uh, how do I reduce warranty costs by getting ahead of the curve and correlating all the hard information I have on actual warranty claims with all the more human information about what people are saying about me in social media networks and so on? How do I bring all that together to get a better solution? So this is what we're setting out to do with the Haven platform. Be able to pull all this together, allow you to talk to 100% of your data deliver it through a set of applications that we provide uh, from HP, but also make it available to you and to developers uh, and to other partners so that they can build their own solution sets. And to do that, we've done this in a way that makes sure we have a software developer kit and a set of open APIs that anyone can use. And incidentally, when I think about open APIs, we've been running a whole series of hackathons against our platform um, over the uh, past few months in locations from San Francisco to London and beyond. And we've seen an amazing amount of innovation come out as developers look at what we have and then turn it into applications that frankly range from the highly entertaining through to the very, very profound. So that's what we're setting out to do. But I also want to talk about how we're bringing life to the Hadoop infrastructure. Now, many of you, I think, have approached big data as, let me install Hadoop and somehow that solved the problem. I believe we can help you leverage the investments that you've made in Hadoop and unleash its potential. That's what our tool set is all about. So let's think how we do that. 
Firstly, our colleagues in the enterprise group have done a tremendous amount of work on creating fabulous reference architectures for Hadoop to allow you to get two times the performance in half the space of what you would do if you set out to create traditional infrastructure. That's a breakthrough in itself. By adding HP Haven to a Hadoop infrastructure, you can analyze at a scale and speed that no one else can get close to. We see sometimes results of 100-fold to 1,000-fold faster by using HP Haven to do specific analysis alongside a Hadoop data lake, really unleashing the potential, allowing you to do things in real time or near real time that in the past would be a MapReduce job that could run for minutes or hours. That's the real benefit we can bring. And lastly, we bring an environment that allows you to secure and govern the space. It's really important as you push data into the Hadoop data lake that you have the right policies to make sure you're compliant, the right policies around backup and recovery. So we could do all of that with the HP Haven platform. So I think you should think of HP Haven as, one, helping you solve the pragmatic problems that your enterprise faces, but secondly, and perhaps most importantly, just unleashing the potential that exists uh, with Hadoop. So with that, what I'd like to do now is hand back to Mike, who's going to talk about some of the pragmatic steps you need to take to make sure you can become a data-driven enterprise. Thank you, Robert. There we go. Now, what we constantly hear from our clients is that they have a lot of data, too much data, in fact, and they don't necessarily know where to start or even what's possible. And they're really overwhelmed by it all. So we've established a best practice with our clients to define their strategy in a big data workshop. We create a sandbox platform that shows how a client's data can be combined with external sources, and more importantly, how this impacts their business. Once you have your strategy, it's about building the foundation. And most companies have multiple data warehouses in different forms of analytics spread across different platforms. And they struggle with how to effectively bring these together into one single platform that supports their strategy. The good news is HP Enterprise Services can integrate with any platform and extract the data from applications, which helps you protect your investment. In our experience, clients have had the most success when they've modernized their current BI environment and implemented HP Haven as their foundation. Finally, and most importantly, big data is about insights. Insights that can improve your business processes by embedding analytics across every aspect of your business, not doing it in silos, you'll be able to drive better business outcomes. Now, I started this section by saying that big data overpromises and under delivers. And while that's true, many enterprises we work with are getting the benefits of their invest investment. So take for example, AT&T. Internal business clients demand that a robust analytics platform that could run required queries quickly and efficiently. HP implemented Vertica and HP workload optimization services and this changed the economics of providing actionable insights to decision makers. As a result, they achieved an ROI of 657% with a payback period of less than four months. Simply incredible. Then there's Rockwell Collins. And I know our good friend CIO is in the audience here, so uh, it's great to have him here. And it's just another great example. And here, we've established a standard data governance and search tool process. And this resulted in better search with quicker access to data, improved team collaboration, fewer calls to the service desk, and significantly improved customer satisfaction scores. And then there's Shell. So let's wrap, up, let's wrap up this section with a short video showing how Shell has been able to drive results with HP's big data and cloud capabilities. The Shell Eco Marathon challenges student teams from around the world to design, build, and drive ultra-energy efficient vehicles. We're engaged with some of the brightest and best engineering and IT students in the world. It's a global series of events. We've run an event in Manila, one in Houston, and now in Rotterdam. The event has been running for 30 years, and each year the goal remains the same, to see which vehicle can travel the furthest using the least amount of energy. This really is a showcase for students to create and collaborate on future technologies. And it works. In 1985, our first year, the winning team was getting 680 kilometers per liter of petrol. 
This year, the winning team got over 3,300 kilometers per liter. To put this into perspective, this year's winner could have easily gone from Rotterdam to Athens on one liter of petrol. HP technology is central to the success of Shell Eco Marathon. HP Elite Pad tablets with specialist scanners and laptops allow our technicians to assess and upload data in real time from anywhere on site. We need to register teams, assess them through a 10-step technical assessment, upload this data to a central server, share these details with marshals and media. All data is uploaded and held securely in the HP cloud. We can use as little or as much capacity as required. HP Vertica then provides the data management. This enables us to analyze and visualize this data and better involve our visitors. With HP, we're able to take a live reading of social media sentiment throughout the event. The HP experience is mobile, innovative and flexible. This means we can get on with our job of effectively and efficiently managing the event. And this means the student can concentrate on going further. Great video, and it's really amazing to think that you can go on just uh, one liter of petrol all the way across Europe. So, uh, so I really love that story. Okay, so we've talked about transforming to a hybrid infrastructure, protecting your digital enterprise, and empowering a data-driven organization. Now, let's move on to our fourth and final transformation area, enabling workplace productivity. So we all know how critical the workforce is to delivering a superior customer experience. Everything we've talked about in the other transformation areas is lost if the last mile of the experience fails. That's because in the digital world, user experience is king. Customer engagement happens on an app before it happens in person. So employees have to be ready to engage at a moment's notice. I'd go as far to bet that many of you are managing what's happening back at your office right now with your smartphone in your hand. How many of you have your smartphone in your hand right now? Everybody in the front row here raised their hand here, so uh, that's great. So increasing demands to deliver more experiences on more devices more often creates this massive challenge. And it's just as important here to think differently and act differently. And I love this phrase, random acts of mobility will not shift your productivity in a meaningful way. Our experience in this area will tell you that you need to think user first. It's about use persona based design, providing what each person needs to do their specific role, knowing how, who they are, and always think about the context and personalization of what they do. From an infrastructure perspective, plan for the full stack end-to-end -end, from initial touch point to core data. Your infrastructure must be performance ready for more devices, more features, and smarter environments. It's not just a matter of adding more switches and Wi-Fi nodes. You need to provide a real-time access to information. Finally, you have to think about how to constantly improve your user experience. That means optimizing across your mobile apps and infrastructure, designing, testing, and securing every aspect, and exploiting the full power of analytics into the feedback loop. So as you can see, this is really where all four transformation areas come together, helping you ensure you're delivering the best possible experience to users. And this is absolutely critical because users today are unforgiving. And as a result, this is where enterprises will live or die. Now, what I'd like to do now is invite Antonio back up, and he's going to talk to you more about how HP can help you ensure you not only survive, but you thrive. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. So the question is how you can start the journey with HP. There is many, many different ways you can start with HP. 
So let's talk about that. First, securely connect people and things in any place, on any device, at any time, using our HP and Aruba networking campus solutions. Second, unlock creativity with meaningful interactions through seamless collaboration using our HP collaboration services. Third, automate your operational workflows to accelerate your mobile efforts with HP Mobility's transformation services. And finally, deliver a high quality application to perform everywhere to improve user experiences with HP mobile application services and Apple's mobile software. But the reality is the end-to-end -end experiences were really matters. And one of the true innovators on optimizing end-to-end -end experiences is Aruba Networks. Aruba Network just became part of the HP family. Together, we're gonna change, redefine the networking landscape. And I'm today very, very thrilled to bring on stage the man who's gonna help us do that, Dominic Orr. Thank you. HP and Aruba are coming together in a very opportune moment when a lot of our customers are asking us to help them to transform to a new workplace that supports a cloud-first, mobile-first environment. So let us revisit in the last couple of decades how the workplace has transformed. When you and I first start working, Work in life is very simple. You go to the office, you lean forward, do your work. Afterward, you go back home, you lean backward, put up your feet, open up a can, and you uh, relax. And we use very separate pieces of equipment for work and for life. Then life gets a little bit complicated with the introduction of laptop, DSL, Wi-Fi, VPN and better connectivity at work. So sometimes during the uh, break and, and, and lunchtime, you actually can do some piece of your life-related uh, uh, stuff at, at work, and then you, like it or not, ended up bringing back home a lot of work. Now, work is happening both in the office and at home. And the biggest buzzword in this era, obviously, is the work-life balance. Then ushering what we call Gen Mobile, we completely lost it. It does not work at home or office. It work in the third place, and the third place is everywhere. Every 20 seconds, we flip back and forth, back and forth between work and life, work and life and work. We have turned completely ADD. <laughs> now, for the IT community, how do you support the increasing demand of the users who just love this way of living the life and, and work, but yet stick to the corporate compliance and cybersecurity prevention needs of your organization. Mobility, security. Almost impossible to balance, and that's where the rub is, right? So in order to define a next generation workplace for Gen Mobile, IT organization and corporate uh, management do not worry about cubicle square foot uh, per, you know, the, per, per office. They worry about increasing the, what we call collisionable moment. Now, uh, part of me, I know a lot of you think that collisionable is not a proper English word, and it is not, okay? But this is the TAC conference, so allow me. Collisionable moment, I want you to remember that word, okay? And collisionable moment means the moment where compute intersect with communicate. And in a back office environment, that means moments where minds meet, ideas collide, agreements made with the latest analytics, with your colleagues that are distributed across the world. That is a collisionable moment. For the front office, a collisionable moment means 
the moment where compute and communicate transact to improve qualitatively and quantitatively that customer transaction experience so that the venue owner can increase customer loyalty and increase wallet share while the customer's on your premise. In this sense, the infrastructure is now part of your customer relationship system. The interaction of infrastructure and application and business requirement. And that is what Mac referred to as the new style of the business enabled by IT. Now, a lot of our customers are already starting to embark on this journey. This is actually a real picture taken in San Francisco by one of our employees outside of one of our customers who is an internet service provider, a very famous and good one, uh, that they want to completely gut their offers to support this whole collisionable moment uh, friendly uh, environment. And a lot of you probably are impressed by just the visual sight of how much copper get recycled. But that is not the real point. The real point I would like you to think about is think about, if you think this is wastage, think about all the equipment that is hooked onto the end of this copper. All the software that is supposed to be running that is idling, and all the extra maintenance fees that you're paying for those software that are not running on those hardware, those burning cycles at the end of this copper. Collectively, collectively you think all your organizations here, you know, how much of your infrastructure were built for Gen X and Gen Y worker and sitting there cycling when your Gen Mobile users were pounding that you need to transform for them. And that is really the beginning of the need for migrating to a hybrid infrastructure. You see that, right? And now, in Aruba Networks, we tried an experiment. 18 months ago, we say one of the systems that is hooked to that uh, uh, cabling system is this stuff. You know, I haven't used it for so long, I forgot what they call. Uh, you do occasionally check your voicemail through that, right? <laughs> so, we say, and, and this is over the Christmas period of 2013, I say over three, uh, three week period, we said, how about remove completely, and I mean 100%, all the phones in the PBX system on the campus. That is for, and we use, and we have a close partnership with Microsoft, we migrated from the link 2010 to 2013, we turn on the joint Microsoft Aruba de develop um, uh, management system, to visualize the, the, the wireless and the voice traffic on the campus, and boom, sky for business take over, and the collisionable moment dramatically increase. You're changing behavior of 100% of the work on that side, not to mention the saving of $700 per employee we uh, achieve through this exercise. So if that kind of transformation is attractive to you, we have a recipe for you. And the recipe is actually very simple, and it starts with stabilizing your air. I bet a lot of you have wireless at work. I bet a lot of you, the wireless at your work was built to support the occasional cordless extension from your, of your laptop from your desk to a conference room and go back. That is a very proper Gen Y way of using your, 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 your wireless but we are not in an era for cordless extension of Ethernet anymore. We are in an era with the rival 11AC on using wireless to replace Ethernet. Ethernet now has dropped on as a supportive system, the next generation Ethernet, which is gonna be smarter, faster, and thinner. What really is important that you create a wireless environment that not only support occasional cordless extension of Ethernet, but it supports very smooth roaming, it supports multimedia, it supports a heterogeneous um, operating environment of devices that come in and out and get introduced every three days. That is the nature of stable and the Aruba operating system can help you do that. Once you have a stable and, uh, infrastructure, the next thing you want to do is to secure it. 
Now, a lot of you have very big firewalls on your campus, I know, but can you examine what's the nature of the firewall? The, of the whole enterprise cybersecurity system original was built to support the client-server model of people sitting by the desk, the servers around the corner in the department, and all this is capturing the land, and the land gets bigger and bigger, and you wrap a big, gigantic firewall around it and call it a safe zone, and you have the so-called DMZ, but once you finish building that, you know what? You travel, you get home, you're always on the wrong side of the firewall, so you get VPN, and who like to use VPN uh, all the time, right? So fundamentally, our problem about enterprise security is we are building all this bigger and bigger firewall protecting the empty desk and protecting the servers that are not there because they already moved to the cloud. So the migration of the corporate security. <laughs> so the idea of corporate security has to move from a port and perimeter-centric type of security to a user-centric, persona-centric, location-centric, and mobility context-centric way of cybersecurity. And that is a transformation that uh, Aruba, through the ClearPass platform, can help you to do that. By the way, the ClearPass platform runs on top of all network infrastructure, including, of course, that uh, made by that uh, five-letter word uh, vendor uh, that some of you have. Now, after you have a secure, stable network, the next thing is to make it smart. The, the, the basic environment for a mobile-first, cloud-first infrastructure is constant changes. And you just cannot afford to keep reconfiguring the, your network. This is where software-defined network is finding its mission, moving from the data center applications to the campus. And this is where the Aruba Meridian software is going to help you to find your users and, and sort, out, so, sort out the traffic in your air so that your network infrastructure is dynamically uh, uh, smart and it becomes interactive. Finally, after all these technologies are installed, you say, gee, I, I really cannot handle it because uh, I end up having five PhDs running the knock. No, no, we are going to simplify it. And this is where Aruba Airwave management system is going to help you to move from the old style of network management, which is to configure, install, operate, and troubleshoot. You need all of that. But the future of network management has to be protect, proactive management, predictive management, and predictive capacity planning, and using a lot of machine learning technology. And that is what the airway management is going to move uh, for you and over the cloud and on premise. So if you, want, if you are interested in this four-step recipe, um, Kitty McCote, uh, Aruba founder and CTO, is going to give a tutorial tomorrow at 7.30 in ballroom G. G as in George. And so that is the recipe. Make your network stable, secure in a mobile way, smart in an interactive way, and simple in the forward-looking new style of network management. With the four S's, you're all set. Well, not quite. I think this is an area where the HP and Aruba synergy is going to be even enhancing your experience because we have a fifth S, services. OK, this is a lot of stuff being thrown at you. So you, if you need consultative service, installation services, maintenance services, or all, go all the way out to infrastructure as a service outsourcing, we have the complete catalog of service for you. And this is the where. Aruba and HP better together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, you have to love that energy and passion. I mean, I cannot tell you how excited I am to have Aruba part of the HP family.
You can see we are on a mission, a mission to simplify networking, to change the way you access the network, to give you context-aware access to services. And we believe HP and Aruba can do that better than anybody else. So the question is, what are the business outcomes you can achieve with HP now that we have this incredible portfolio? First, we can help you optimize that foundation and lower the cost when you deploy our HP Aruba wireless solutions and increase the capacity by 42%. That's pretty dramatic. Bandwidth matters, cost and agility matters. Second, we can help you with our transformation services to reduce your cost per employee by $11,000 per year. When you are, use our advisory services, the, fi the fifth S that uh, Dom just talked about it, we can help you optimize the cost of your workflow. Another great example is what we did in our own environment in HP IT. We went through a massive simplification of our conference call system. We were able to return more than five million minutes back to our employees so they can focus on our customers. From an idea to value and every step in between, your choice of a strategic transformation partner really matters. And we believe HP is the right partner for you to embark in all these transformation areas. Now, I would like to invite Meg back on stage so we can provide the final thoughts about this session today. And it has been a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very much. So thank you to Antonio and thanks to our team for a great display of our four transformation areas. How about that team of presenters on the floor here? Great job, you guys, thank you. So we covered a lot of ground this afternoon, but there's more coming tomorrow. There has been one primary theme that's been running through everything we've talked about, and that is our commitment to you. For more than seven decades, HP has been bringing leading edge technology with the help of our partners to millions of customers around the world, helping everyone from individual consumers to the largest global enterprises becoming more productive and more successful. And we're proud of all that we have achieved and all the innovation that we've delivered, but we also believe there are greater things ahead for HP and greater value that we can deliver to you our customers and our partners. And I can tell you with confidence that Hewlett Packard Enterprise will be a lot more than the HP Enterprise business with a new name. That is not our starting point. Our starting point is the idea economy and how it is redefining the nature of IT and the very nature of business. Our starting point is IT solutions. Solutions that help you transition to a new style of business through four transformation areas. Our innovation engine, together with the best and broadest set of products, services, and solutions, will allow us to build a strong foundation together. Our services are the tip of the spear, where the journey begins together where we bring our knowledge and expertise to bear for the enterprise. We have the infrastructure you need, not only to optimize traditional IT, but to build an agile, secure, cloud-enabled, mobile-ready future. We have the software that allows you to automate IT operations for the speed of business and the analytics that allow you to turn data into business knowledge and knowledge into competitive advantage. We have the hybrid cloud platform that will enable you to take advantage of self-service delivery and new business model innovation that will make you more efficient and flexible while accelerating time to value. We have IT consumption models, financial architectures, and investment solutions that we can tailor to your needs. And this is as critical as delivering the right technology. And through our outstanding partners, we'll bring to bear your ideas, your outcomes, your way, the way you want to consume, whether it's on-premise, on-demand, or managed. The way you want to transform, whether it's your applications, your infrastructure, your data center, or your business. 
We will support you the way you need any app, any hardware around the world. And I want to leave you with one other thought. We're open. We want to work with you the way you want, whether it's your partner, your cloud, using your tools, or your apps. So if you put this all together, you can clearly see that Hewlett Packard Enterprise has the power to help you deal with a constantly shifting landscape. A focused and strategic partner with the people, the technology, and the ideas to help you accelerate business speed and time to value. So I want to thank you again for your business and for your loyalty. We don't take it for granted. We know you ha we have to continue to earn your trust every single day as HP and as Hewlett Packard Enterprise tomorrow. And that is our commitment to you to be the innovative, strategic, reliable partner you need to thrive in the IT economy, providing you with IT solutions for the new style of business. So as you leave this room, I encourage you to walk through the Discover Zone and take in this moment in history, where the narrative for our future is being written in real time. I shared my top 10 must-sees in our new Discover app which includes the booths and areas that will help you help us write this story. We look forward to getting your input and your feedback over the next two days so we can be an even stronger partner for you. So thank you for the support over the years. Thank you for the support in the future. We're grateful that you came today. Thank you very much and have a great Discover.